cheap cards. The ones that have the effect of destroying, exiling, or in some way making other cards useless. After much patience, you look on with pride as your plan starts to unfold, only to watch it collapse because your opponent drew a card with destroy target creature. And those cards aren't even hard to use. That's not strategy. That's luck. And it's the reason I don't play magic very often. Ironically, these cheap card effects betray the whole mechanic that makes Magic the Gathering so deep. That's because rather than targeting creatures for an attack, your opponent targets you, giving you a choice to involve your creatures by blocking, which can mean losing them or leaving them out and taking the damage yourself. As a teenager, I thought this was ridiculous. As an adult, I realize exactly what they were thinking. This clever limitation grants a sense of permanence to your creatures, so they can last long enough to build up a strategy. Effects compound, cards complement each other, and before you know it, you've got a force to be reckoned with. And this is how magic distinguishes itself as a game for adults, not like Pokemon and Hearthstone, which limit your plans to only a few turns, because your cards will be gone by then. Especially Hearthstone. It's frankly baffling how developers think we want to play these cool cards just to see them disappear. And it's gone! Yet the developers of Magic make this exact mistake by making cheap cards. It's also ironic because they make the painstaking effort of fine-tuning the game precisely by seeking out and banning cards they deem to be too powerful, adding them to a list of hundreds. Yet they never think to ban the ones that are so obviously overpowered, it's a wonder they were ever made. You're watching Bacon. If you wish to support us and get more videos, please like, subscribe, and click the bell for more.